Hi, this is Robin Bremer, the author of the Kingdom Living series and the Kingdom Living Bible Study course. And today, um, I say um too much, don't I? <laughs> today I want to go over something, okay, how to get saved. I know that you know how to get saved, but let me just share this little snippet of information I think is life-changing. I don't know who quoted this, but it's true. No amount of doing good is good enough. So God, because God demands perfection. So he provided the solution, Jesus. Okay? And Jesus is the only way to the Father. Jesus is the only way to heaven. Jesus is the only way to get saved. And with that note in mind, it's all about Jesus. It's not about us doing good or being good or being obedient. You see, when we're saved, when we believe <clears throat> that Jesus paid the price for our sins and we receive that gift, we're born again. We're brand new creatures. And we're new creations that has never been before. And God's Spirit, through His Holy Spirit, comes to live inside of us. And His Holy Spirit is a guarantor that we are saved. Not our behavior, not our feelings, but the Holy Spirit living inside of us. Now, how do you know you have the Holy Spirit living inside of us? The Holy Spirit is a spirit, and He bypasses our natural mind and our natural thinking by supernaturally leading us to speak in a language that we don't understand. It's a supernatural thing because God is supernatural and His Spirit is supernatural. So one of the ways we know we're filled with the Holy Spirit is by speaking in another language or called tongues. And when we speak in tongues, it's we, we know that we have the Holy Spirit, we know that we're saved. Now, we don't get unsaved tomorrow when we uh, do something stupid when we break a rule or a commandment or disobey God we don't get unsaved the next day because we messed up <clears throat> we don't become an un old creature again and we don't become unborn again God's seed remains in us forever so once we're saved we're saved okay we become God's child we because no amount of doing good is good enough because God demands perfection so God gave the perfect solution and that was Jesus so it's all about Jesus it's all about Jesus now when you fall in love with somebody when you really get to know Jesus intimately and personally you're not gonna want to sin first of all sin separates you from God Sin always leads to death. It could be death of, of, of um, a marriage, death of a relationship, death of a business, death of uh, sensitivity, death of uh, love. Who knows what? Sin always leads to death. So you don't want to sin because sin leads to death. And you also don't want to sin because it grieves the Holy Spirit. And Another reason you don't want to sin is because the holy because uh, the devil will take your sin and amplify it and put it in your mind and and condemn you and when you're condemned you have no confidence in God. It's like when a renter owes rent. Well, if the landlord lives next in the next apartment to you, you're going to try to hide and sneak past his door because you don't want to see him because you owe him something. And the same thing is <clears throat> once you're saved, if you start sinning, the devil's going to take that sin and cond bring condemnation on you so that you don't want to come near God. You don't feel good enough to come near God. Uh, you uh, avoid God. You don't want anything to do with God because you're in sin. And then you get in deeper and deeper and deeper and further away, so far away that you can't hear his voice, that you can't hear him directing you not to go to this event or not to go to this building or not to go here because this is going to happen. And, going to kill you or could almost kill you. You won't hear his voice because there's so many other voices out here in the world uh, trying to get your attention. And you're messing up and in sin, so you're pulling yourself away from God and then the devil is 
bringing condemnation and, and driving a wedge there. It's not that God removed himself from you. It's that you removed himself from God. God is your father. Once you accept him as your Lord and, and you know what Jesus did, he becomes your father. So <clears throat> once you're saved, you're always saved. I'm trying to like put this in a, a glob of all different angles of coming at this. But also if you look in the Old Testament, once that you're saved, um, the high priest would come and he would sacrifice an animal. And that animal would cover sin for one year. Now, if Jesus' blood can't cover you for one year, then why did Jesus die? Because an animal can do better than Jesus. If the blood of an animal covered every single sin and stupid thing a person did for a year, but the blood of Jesus can't cover you for one night of mess up or one one day or one week then the blood of Jesus is off a week and it didn't accomplish anything but Jesus but the sacrificial lambs was a copy of Jesus the lamb covered your sins for one year well Jesus takes away your sin forever he paid the price for your sin forever the blood of Jesus is stronger than the blood of a lamb and the blood of the lamb was so strong that it lasted for one year so the blood of Jesus is much stronger than that and and the priest could never sit down because their job was never done year after year after year they'd have to sacrifice while well, Jesus was a high priest that brought his own blood his own sacrifice and he didn't have to he he could sit down because his job was done the sacrifice was good enough to last forever now we didn't just get we didn't come to Jesus and then from that point on um, you know all their sins behind us was wiped clean by the blood of Jesus no when we came to Jesus all of our sins were forgiven past present and future all uh, he paid for all of our sins he sat down and it's finished now when we mess up <clears throat> We grieve the Holy Spirit when we mess up, just like we grieve our husband if we do something stupid. We grieve our spouse, okay? And it's no fun grieving your spouse. You love them, you don't want to hurt them. You grieve your children, you don't love them, you don't want to hurt them, okay? So we don't want to sin and don't want to mess up. But God loves us forever, okay? He doesn't He doesn't make us his kid, born again, new creation one day, the next day we mess up, he throws us out and unadopts us, okay? not like that so I just want you to have that security just wanted to come at you from all different angles about being once saved always saved uh, if you have any questions uh, comments leave them um, on the bottom if you're on YouTube subscribe up here I think on that site if you're on my blog over here you can follow me on Twitter Facebook Pinterest YouTube and a bunch of other places uh, leave comments uh, remark whatever you can say what you like I won't I don't get mad at people who oppose my opinion it took me over a year of study and research and praying to come to this place where I knew that I was saved no matter what. That I was saved no matter what I was saved. It took me a year of going back and forth of torment and torture and study and praying and research to come to this place. So I don't expect you to receive it overnight either. It'll take a while because the world likes to teach, religion likes to teach, the devil likes to teach you get saved but you have to earn it and you have to earn it to keep it and that's not true so anyway my name is robinbremer.net is my website and i will talk to you tomorrow